Okay. Minnesota officer. Let's see here. First time I'm using this. Minnesota officer who shot Dante Wright meant to fire Taser, Chief said. I was after body camera video of the killing was released. Protesters gathered outside the Brooklyn Center police station despite a new curfew for much of the Twin Cities region. So let's see. Yeah. Hmm. It's like deja vu, that French word. Justice for Dante Wright. Okay, let's see. Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Officer fatal shot a black man during a traffic stop. Imagine that. A traffic stop near Minnesota, Minneapolis, mistakenly confused her gun for her taser. Police officials said on Monday, quickly released the video as they tried to ease tension in the state on edge over the Derek Chauvin trial. Wow. <laughs> I don't believe that. But let me read this anyway. You know? I'll give my reason why I don't believe it. In a brief clip of body camera video, officers from the Brooklyn Center Police Department can be seen trying to handcuff the driver, Dante Wright, before he suddenly lurches back into his car. One of the officers aims a weapon at Mr. Wright and shouts, Taser, Taser, Taser. She fires one round and Mr. Wright groans in pain. Holy shit, I just shot him. The officer can be heard shouting. Late Monday, the officer who fired the fatal shot was identified as Kim Potter who has worked for the department for 26 years. <laughs> Imagine that, I can understand you're a rookie, you know, and you make a mistake like that, but after 26 years in the job, the announcement came as, uh, as protesters faced off with the police. Hundreds had gathered outside the Brooklyn Center police station for the second consecutive night. They find a new 7 p.m. curfew in a steady rain. Demonstrators occasionally lobbied water bottles and rocks over newly erected fences and chanting, kill a cop and hands up, don't shoot, while officers clad in right gear stood guard. Officers responded by sporadically firing projectiles at the crowd and at one point released a chemical agent that caused people to start coughing. Mayor Mike Elliott of Brooklyn Center in an interview on CNN urged the protesters to leave. I'm asking everybody to go home. We need to keep the peace in our city. By midnight, only a few dozen people remain. The fatal shooting on Sunday took place in a region already at the center of a national reckoning over police officers use a force against black people. Now let me just stop there because uh, recently we had um, police use a force like down in Atlanta, Georgia area, metro area. That white guy, 21 years old, claims to be a sex addict, went in, shut up three different Asian places, uh, massage parlors. I think he killed about eight eight people. Then he was on his way the way to Florida and the police managed to take him in alive, right? They took him in alive. Not beaten up or anything like that. They took him in alive. Other guy out there, uh, what was that, in Colorado I believe? Shot up and killed like ten different people. He he went to um an apartment store. Killed a number of people, then came out, took most of his clothes off, police brought him in alive. Um, we also have some other incidences recently too. The guy did all that shooting in um, 
that school in Florida, remember him? Down in Florida, Southern Florida. Killed some students, even a teacher. He was taken alive, not a white guy. Then um, we had Dylan, the guy who went into the Baptist church, South Carolina. Killed like nine different, nine black people. Police came, police got him later on, took him in alive. <laughs> and, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because these people compare what they did. They actually took the lives of people, you know. If, if the police had killed any one of them, most people would say, well, yeah, you know what? You got what you deserve. But this guy, uh, Dante Wright, was tough for uh, traffic. Uh, I think it expired tags. Yeah. Registration. You know, and we talking about we talking about a time now when, like, um, things like vehicle registration sometimes not even in the system due to the pandemic. You know, <laughs> because like due to the pandemic, a lot of people can't even get into the DMV in person. So things may even though you maybe it may not be expired. And 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 um, you know it may be in the system, but it's not there as yet. But still, that's no reason to escalate something like that. Just like the guy, the black Hispanic guy in in Virginia, pulled over by the cops. He had um, one of those provisional license plates. I guess he bought like a new car or maybe a used car. And the cops, it was the cops' fault. They didn't see the tag it was too dark or something where the tag was it's up at a higher level and cops usually have very good vision you know because that's one of the reasons they hide they 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 usually don't hire cops who have poor vision you have to have really good vision to be able to see well with your naked eyes some of them may maybe i don't know maybe 2040 they probably get hired, but most most cops come on don't really need glasses to see in the distance. They could see very well, like an eagle. They could see small print, you know, in a car all the way in front of them. Look at those Pennsylvania license plates. Those registration. I remember a cop pulling that out, you know, and those numbers are small. The registration date on the license. Mo, you know, it's not it's not that easy to see, but yet the cop was able to pull that out. But anyway, I'm digressing here. The point is, look at the difference in the treatment. The officer from the army, look how he was treated. Here's a guy serving his country, and he was treated like like a piece of s. You know, just for something that has to do with a traffic. Supposedly traffic violation, which wasn't even one anyway, and they wanted him to get out of the car. And uh, like he said, you know, if it's a traffic issue, it's not really a crime that you have to tell a person to get out of the car. You don't tell people to get out of the car just for, for traffic. You just take their papers or what have you and give them, um, well, that's how it is in most traffic. You, you stop them. I guess you want to go to a well-lit area. And I saw I saw some cops on some shows that tell people, you know, because sometimes they were going around, people were going around impersonating police, and then people end up getting robbed or lost their lives. So they say, well, the thing is, you go to a well-lit area, so cops who have common sense will know that this is probably what was going on here. And even one of the officers, the one who got fired in Virginia, said that most of his problems or issues are people who fail to stop or go to a, a different area, a wild area, having to be minority. Well, there's a reason for that. There's a history behind that. You don't want to. You don't want to stop in a dark area with people who claim to be the police and then accidentally shoot you without any witnesses. So that, that's the reason right there. And see, now getting back to this. The federal shooting took, shooters 
the fatal shooting on Sunday took place in a region already at the center of a national reckoning over police officers' use of force against black people. As the investigation into Mr. Wright's death in Brooklyn Center was beginning Monday, prosecutors in the courtroom less than 10 miles away completed the questioning of their witnesses in the trial of Mr. Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer charged with murdering George Floyd last May. Okay. Now, the Twin Cities has spent the day bracing for unrest. Now, you would think that, okay, you have a high-profile um, trial going on, not too far from you, and all these incidents are caused by the police, regardless how you feel. The fact is, the police caused this problem, the police incense these people, the police <laughs> claim to accidentally shoot somebody, just like they killed George Floyd or what have you. So people are incensed. So you know all that is going on already. And why, where do you put your emphasis? Stopping people for, um, for, for like a registration a violation or registration. Why not say, you know what, during this week here, the things that usually connect like a lot of black people with incidents with police violence, police deaths, is usually being stopped by a police officer for something minor and then it escalates, right? It escalates to something higher. So in, instead of saying, well, why not, why not, uh, why not, let's de-emphasize that right now. In the middle of a trial, <laughs> Chances are you may stop somebody and then there's an escalation. So let's put that aside. You know, if a guy has expired tags or what have you, what's going to happen is that if his state requires insurance, the DMV is going to write him. That happened to me. <laughs> yeah, it did happen to me, and that's a true story. And then they're going to say, well, you know what? Your, your registration expired, so you don't have any insurance, so you got to pay a fine. And that's it. So it becomes a civil issue. Why turn it into a criminal issue? And then she goes checking and turns out apparently he has some uh, like two uh, like um, outstanding, I think it's, it's not even a felony, like misdemeanor warrants. Not even there, but in another area. Okay, so she escalated it. So I think one was for like smoking marijuana, which is a joke now, right? Supposedly somebody else said for like having a gun or so forth. Well, you would think living in this country, having a gun shouldn't even be a crime unless you're a criminal, you know, because guns are like all over, people say Second Amendment, right? So why should even be having a gun be really be a crime unless, you know, you committed some kind of real crime? You see, even if you have a gun and you're not a criminal, I don't even think you should go to jail because guns are part of the Second Amendment. Marijuana is legal in Colorado, is legal in New York now. Who would have thought marijuana? And that's what the police use to stop a lot of black people. So if you look at it from that perspective where people cry about the right to own their guns and people talk about, you know, the emphasize in marijuana. Well, what do you really have? You don't really have much to stop this guy. And even if you did, you already know where where he lives. You got you got the information on him when you pull him over. You were putting him in a handcuff. Some people are stupid. They panic. They want to run away from the police. Okay. So the issue is this: if somebody's running away from you. You have two choices. You can chase on foot or you can chase by car. If you under force 26 years old, I mean, for 26 years, that means maybe you're not in shape. <laughs> maybe, maybe you shouldn't be out there pulling people over, you know? Maybe you should be like a sergeant or something. Yeah.
after 26 after 26 years in the force because the way it works is um you're supposed to chase the person and you, you're not supposed to use deadly force unless you reasonably believe that person is armed and we know that's not the case because they were already ha they already had him in handcuffs trying to arrest him so obviously you know guy is skinny he's not big and then when you look at the gun she had the gun out a while why do you even need a gun for somebody who is um you know who was tough for a traffic infraction so they saying yeah he also said in the meantime i want to make it clear again there's absolutely no justification none for looting which is true no justification for violence peaceful protest protests understandable Governor Tim Walz, the Democrat, angrily demanded that state lawmakers pass police reform that has languished since Mr. Floyd's death. He said he was going straight from the news conference to the Capitol in St. Paul. Our time was was made clear last May in Minnesota, Mr. Walz said, alluding to the death of Mr. Floyd. Our time to get one shot at fixing it was there. And in the midst of this trial, that the world's watching, the situation repeated itself yesterday. Okay, and the reason it repeated, it repeated itself is because there's like no consequences really for the police, you know. And if you look at the trial that's gone on, uh, they're trying to put everything in like Floyd had uh, methamphetamine and uh, what's that other drug, Fent fentanyl in his system. And they try and say, well, that's what that's what killed them. The the fact is, and I've worked. By the way, I've worked in um, I've worked in drug rehab before, so I'm familiar with it. Like people on in, in um, let's see, people who get hooked in heroin and so forth. And we have uh, what we call like Narcan. It's in like in a blue bag. To revive the person usually like if somebody is knocked out from heroin or fentanyl fentanyl I think is like about a hundred times more powerful than like the heroin you see or morphine it's really powerful stuff so what happens is that you use this can you like put put one on one side of the nose, press it once, wait five minutes to see, to assess. And the can acts like an antagonist, chemical antagonist. And it reverses the effect of the opiate. So if you have opiate in your system, what's going to happen is that you're gonna become like drowsy, hard to arouse, hard to wake you up. Your speech is gonna be slurred. You're gonna be, you're gonna pass out. You're probably going to a coma. That's how people die, like people over there. But if you, if you're using like these type of drugs for a while or for years or what have you, and we saw that with um. We saw that with the deceased, right? When he was in the in the cup store, wa walking around, I think when he went to pay with that phony twenty dollar bill, or so forth, uh, Floyd. That doesn't look like somebody who is knocked out on opiate. People who are knocked out on opiate, like on heroin and so forth. They shoot too much heroin because what happened is that they build up a so-called tolerance. And um, after a while, in order to achieve the same high, you need to take more and more of the drug. You know, it doesn't it doesn't work. And I think everybody understands that. Like if you sit on the jury, most people understand that if you use the same drug all the time, usually after a while it doesn't have, seem to have the effect. And maybe you need to double up on the drug. You know, that's if you if you're a chronic user of the drug. 
So if if you if you're new to it, sure, it's gonna have an effect on you. But if you've been using a drug for like a few years or so forth, it's not gonna it's not gonna kill you. The only way it's gonna kill you is if you really overdose, you take too much of it, then it's gonna kill you. And that's not the case at all. Yeah. So Floyd died because of a lack of oxygen and to the heart. And the heart is a big muscle divided into two muscles, actually, two pumps, two pumps, actually. And in order for that pump to work, you need to have oxygen. And if, if you cut off the oxygen to the heart, to the muscles, like the coronary arteries and so forth that feed the heart muscle, the heart will die. The heart will stop working. It will become ineffective. And that's the quickest way to die than saying somebody died from opiate overdose. But that's what his lawyer, that's what Chauvin's lawyer is trying to say. Everything he comes back to, to opiate, opiate, opiate. When anybody with common sense will know that if somebody put their arms around your neck and choke the hell out of you, that's going to kill you faster than if you take some fentanyl. <laughs> you know, it's going to take a little while for fentanyl to get through your system. So somebody who is walking around buying stuff, uh, who, who didn't appear to be like in a coma, who's speaking to you, who's that person ain't gonna die like that. He died because his oxygen was cut off. You cut it off. Makes the person like sleepy after a while. You know, you cut it off. The heart is gonna stop because once you cut off that rich supply of uh, blood oxygen to the heart, the heart slows down, the person dies, the muscles in the heart die. And then the brain is not fed any oxygen and the brain is going to die. The cells in the brain are going to die. Nothing, nothing to do with, nothing to do with uh, drug overdose. You, you have to be, you have to really be, um, what do you call it there, Pollyanna, to really believe the BS, the lawyer, the lawyer in the, in the trial. The defense lawyer is trying to spin, <laughs> you know, like Rumpel Kiskin to spin uh, straw in the gold. So you would think that they would de-emphasize something like that, like registration and say, look, you know, we're going through a moment like this that's really tough. Let's de-emphasize that. And here in, in New York City, where I live, the police at times do de-emphasize certain things because they know that, you know, certain times, certain things that may maybe um, that they usually deal with, they say, no, you know, let's hold off on that because we don't want to get in, into something that could trigger something. So I guess the police here in New York City, they have a, they have a lot of history behind them. So they know, like, there are certain times, <laughs> there are certain times you don't do certain things, you know? I mean, it's like, let's say St. Patrick's Day Parade. You know you're going to run into people um, who's going to be drinking, right? Drinking, I don't know, a lager or something like that up Fifth Avenue. Yeah, you're not supposed to be drinking in open can, but are you really going to go around arresting every every Irish person you see during St. Patrick's Day Parade who's drinking lager, or drinking beer, or, you know, drinking um, Heineken, or drinking some some s s stuff like that. You're going to find a lot of people drinking in St. Patrick's Day Parade. So you got to use your judgment to know whether you should engage in that. You see? So, apparently, um, they didn't use their judgment at all. The police chief should have said, look, you know, we, we have this high-profile trial going on. The world is watching. 
It's not only here in the U.S., but the world is watching. Let's not, let's not make news with something else. Let's not escalate. And that's exactly what happened. So, to me, the, the chief of police should step down because there was no leadership there. I mean, come on. You got something like that going on in your backyard. And you can't even provide the leadership to say, let's de-emphasize things like stopping people for traffic violation. That can wait another day, you know. Let's wait. Let's wait. This, let's let this trial get on with. We, we don't want to get involved with something like that. And then this happens. So what does that say about uh, leadership? That's not a good example at all. So to question why Mr. Wright, who the police said was stopped for driving a vehicle with an expired registration, would have been pulled over at all. Everyone is on high alert right now, she said. I don't know why they would be making traffic stops like this at this moment in time. The police said officers attempted to detain him after they discovered there was a warrant for his arrest stemming from a mishearing on a misdemeanor gun charge. Hmm. So not, and I'm not following a gun charge, but a misdemeanor gun charge. So misdemeanor means the sentences that could be less than a year or maybe thrown out if you clean up your act. <laughs> so this guy ends up being, being killed for a misdemeanor gun charge. Mr. Wright was facing two misdemeanor charges after Minneapolis police said he had carried a pistol without a permit and had run away from officers last June. All right, so he was carrying a pistol without a permit, you know? Here in the United States, there are many uh, localities where you don't even need a permit to have a damn gun, you know? You can carry a gun without a permit. <laughs> You know, some some of them, some localities, you need to get a permit, but not all. You see? So I'm just saying that all the stuff that that he's accused of or charged with or what have you, is legal in some other jurisdiction and maybe within the same state of Minnesota because Minnesota has a lot of rural areas. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of rural. Uh, rural. Areas, and I had a girlfriend who uh, moved, moved there, and her husband, I don't know, took a whole bunch of pictures. I don't know, was trying to send me a message, and she, she, she doesn't like guns, and I was surprised. She had like a lot of different guns in the pictures she was with, and this is in Minnesota, you know. So there was a person who didn't like guns, but her husband how to take pictures with a whole bunch of different types of guns and so forth. So they live in a rural area, they live in a farm. Up where they live, more, more than likely, you don't even need a permit to have a gun. Same state. So Katie Wright told reporters that her son had been driving a, a car his family had given him two weeks ago, see? That's why I don't even drive anymore because you drive, you attract the police. And uh, he had called her as he was being pulled over. So he just got the car two weeks ago. <laughs> and that, that causes death. He said they pulled him over because he had air fresheners hanging from his rearview mirror. See, that's another thing in some states you, there are certain things you can't have hanging, you know. It's a distraction. Like here in, in New York, you can't have. You're not supposed to have like a a for sale sign, like in the back of your car, like in the windshield obstructing, like saying this car is for sale. No, that's those are one of the things that may, many people may not know that, but those are one of the things that like it's a violation. You know, so while you're driving, like the reason for that is to say, well, other drivers could be distracted when they see a for sale sign. They're reading what it is, and um, they can cause an accident. 
So these are the kinds of stuff the police pull people over for, and then it, then it escalates. So the police said a woman in the car had been hurt in a crash that occurred as the vehicle kept moving after the shooting. Chief Tim Gannon of the Brooklyn Center Police Department said in a news conference that it would use the body camera video of the shooting to determine whether Officer Potter would remain on the force. How <laughs> could Really? Somebody on the force for 26 years and they can't tell the difference between a gun and um, a taser? Usually those tasers tend to be colorful, right? I've seen them. They don't look like a gun. They're different and they're light, much lighter, very different. It is my belief that the officer had the intention to deploy her taser, but instead shot Mr. Wright with a single bullet. Well, from what I from what I heard from Police Express, the way they got around that is because since they had incidents, the taser is put on the non-dominant side, so. Most people have to be right-handed in this country, and so that means your dominant side, your dominant side is your right side. So that's where you put your gun, you know. Because most people are not going to be able to shoot a gun with their left hand, unless you're left-handed, and then you put the taser on your left-hand side, your non-dominant side. So that should solve that problem, and that's the way it's been for years, I think like maybe over 10 years or more, so you don't have this kind of problem. So you're not going to pull on your dominant side, you know that in the, in, in the, in a moment of passion or excitement or what have you, people can become confused or what have you. Even though you look at that video, there's nothing about that video. It's not like she was in, you know, in a shootout or looks like the guy represent imminent threat to her life was the dam in tra traffic infraction, for heaven's sake. It's not like he was a bank robber who just killed some people and running away with a hostage. You already know where you live, you can go get him later. Or the insurance company can say, well, you know what? And now that they say that, now that, they say that uh, the car he only has that car two weeks. That probably might explain why the registration probably wasn't in. Because I remember when I got like a car, it it would take a while for me to get the registration, for me to get the papers and all that stuff to put out there. So that's a possibility why. All right. So we recognize that this couldn't have happened at a worse time. Yeah, right, said Mr. Elliott, the city's first bribe man. We recognize that this is happening at a time when our community, when all of America, indeed, all of the world is watching our community. The racial makeup of the suburb, home to 30,000 residents, was until recently mostly white, but now less than half of the residents are white and are now that you tell the black, Mr. Elliott, who has been mayor for two years, called for the officer who shot Mr. Wright to be fired. My position is that we cannot afford to make mistakes that lead to the loss of life of other people in our profession, he said. And so, I do fully support releasing the officer of a duty. So, imagine if, <clears throat> if, um, if a doctor made a mistake, that kill you, or a, a surgeon, for example, made it made a serious error. That was really gross negligence. Well, most of the time you sue, but you even have some doctors here where I am in this state who prescribe like opiates to people who definitely are drug addicts, and then they OD, they died, and the doctors were arrested and charged with, <laughs> charged with murder, see? Now normally like <clears throat> if you if you prescribe it could be like looked at like um, regular like malpractice you know 
But if a doctor is giving somebody drugs and knows this person is a drug addict, writing these um, opiates like OxyContin, for example, knowing fully well, or maybe the drug company give them an incentive to write these uh, prescriptions, then the doctor, the doctor is going beyond malpractice. The doctor is now engaged in illegal activity. And that's what's have been happening. So you have a number of doctors who's been charged with, with murder, who allow their patient, they allow them, they write prescription knowing fully well these people are addicted. And then the people need more and more pills. And then uh, they take a number of OxyContin. And OxyContin is one of those drugs that will depress the respiratory system and then um, you won't be able to wake up <laughs> you know it's so depressed so let's see um, some people when when they breathe the respiration is a I, I don't know maybe like 16 18 12 so if if your respiration goes on to let's say like six you can only take six you know wow you're gonna die because you're not getting you're not getting enough oxygen coming into your lungs and being pulled out and pull out that carbon dioxide from the blood there's not enough exchange there so you're gonna die because your respiration level is too low you need your respiration like maybe like 16 so for 12, 18, up there in that area, that shows you breathing. So in the final days, we're talking about the case here, which is re which is really unfortunate. The state also called two expert witnesses, a cardiologist, who said Mr. Floyd that it was absolutely preventable and a policing expert who said a reasonable officer would not have put Mr. Floyd face down since he was already in handcuffs and not a threat. In the wake of Mr. Wright's death on Sunday, Mr. Walsh and other officials in Minnesota called for policing reform, including making sure that officers cannot mistake their guns for their taser. I mean, come on. Now, see, this is where I say BS, you know. I know I'm going to go out on the limb here and people may accuse me, but I'm saying this woman is on the job 26 years now. After 26 years, like this year where I live in, in, in New York, like a lot of cops, after 20 years, they, they, they went out because the job with the stress and dealing with people that's not easy <laughs> you know that's not easy and you're not young anymore after 26 years you're not young anymore you know i mean yeah maybe you wanted to be a cop and go out there but when you're young in your 20s that's that's fine but as you get older you get in your 50s you could do different things you could and i met i met some cops like one job i was doing you know, last year um, I ran into some ex-cops who were being paid well to do some security. And they're very decent people, you know. It's like night and day from the people you see in the news, the people who come there, you could talk to them and so forth. Very, very decent people. Very, very different in approach and so forth. So they want to do something different, you know. They want to get up and so they can get a pension. So here in New York, I think it's like 20 years. After 20 years, you can get a pension. But I believe you got to reach a certain age, maybe like 50 or so forth. So then your pension will kick in. So who wouldn't, who wouldn't want that, right? You get a pension, and then you can do another job, like security. And most of the time, they hire them like uh, because they can easily carry a gun or so forth, or I've got a permit, access. One guy said, told me he was making like $45 an hour. And to do what? Not really doing anything, just in the store, working as a security, an ex-cop, former cop. Guy's still young, he's younger than, than me, 
and he's retired. So he's getting he's getting his um retirement money. He's working um he's working part time, goes to these stores, does nothing, really stands around or so forth, make, or even in one case he said he was sitting outside a store in his car. Forty five dollars an hour being paid, not bad, right? You see? So I'm thinking, yeah, this this woman who claimed that she confused a taser and a gun. She probably had enough of the job, wanted to get out, wanted her pension, and she 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 probably took a chance and said, you know what? Most of the time, nothing ain't gonna happen to me anyway. If I if I shoot this guy or what have you, I know they're gonna relieve me of my duties. I'm not gonna be a cop anymore. But effort, you know what? Shoot this guy, nobody gives a shit anyway. You know, nobody cares, nothing's gonna happen to me. Based on past performance, how many cops go to, go to prison except that black um, Somali cop who shot that white Australian woman? He went to prison <laughs> because she knocked on the, on the, on the squad, squad car in the back and he got scared and, and he shoot right over and he killed her with a bullet and so forth. That was stupid. So he had to go to jail, but he's a black cop. He was a black cop of Somali origin. And this is in the same state, Minnesota, in the same area. And there was a lot of pushback in the police about that. So he, he went, the jury had no problem convicting him, sending him to jail. But this is the white woman here now we're talking about. And she probably weighed the option, you know? You get up one morning, if something happened, and by the way, we, we have sociopaths out here, you know? So I'm not going to put anything past some people, and there are cops who are sociopaths. And she could say, I'm going to get my pension anyway, nothing going to happen to me. Yeah, there'll be fuss and furor and all this stuff. Chances are, what, what DA is going to send me to jail, you know, even, even if they try her. She probably get uh, one of those um, sentences where she doesn't have to go to go to prison, or maybe the DA would just say it's a mistake and not even try her. And even if she is tried, she's gonna f find people on the jury who's gonna, <laughs> gonna be sympathetic to her and uh, not find her guilty. So she has a lot of stuff going for her. Yeah. She has a lot of stuff going for her. So, that's one way you can get your pension your pension early. Because most people will find that hard to believe. It's, it's not like she just grabbed for a taser. It's that she had the gun out a while in her hand, in her right hand, in her dominant hand. She had a gun out, and a gun a gun feels differently and it looks differently from a taser you know and um she can tell the difference between a gun and a taser come on even right there that's enough not to be a cop if you can't tell the difference between a gun and a taser so here we have instances of police officers accidentally firing a handgun when they meant to draw their tasers while not common and not entirely unusual either. In 2015, a former Oklahoma Reserve deputy killed an unarmed man when he accidentally grabbed his handgun. In 2018, a rookie Kansas police officer mistakenly shot a man who was fighting with a fellow officer. And in 2019, the police officer in Pennsylvania shot a taser before shooting an unarmed man in the torso. Let's see. Okay, within hours of Mr. Wright dead, people clashed with the police outside of the Brooklyn Center Police Station, where officers fired tear gas, rubber bullets at protesters, some of whom threw bars of garbage and rocks. Hundreds of additional National Guard troops were flooding there. Now, why is this? See, now we have National Guards flooding the area. <laughs> oh my goodness. Flooding the area. I just think this I just 
just I just find I just find that hard to believe. Yeah. Anyway, let me stop this right here. Okay. Let's see here. Stop this. Record. Judge. Let's see, stop.